Coming up in this video, I'll show you how I speed paint a Dungeons & Dragons Owlbear from WizKids Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures line. Welcome back to Mini Junk, everyone. My name is Jarrett. Not a lot of preamble here. We've uh, already discussed how we approach speed painting these um, Nolzer's miniatures a few times in these videos, so I'm going to get to it pretty quickly. If you're interested in the hobby of painting miniatures for board games and war games and RPGs, consider subscribing and click the bell notification so you don't miss any of my videos. The only note I want to make on this guy is he's purple, and I think that's okay. I based that on the picture in the monster manual for 5th edition. I'll put it up here. Uh, I've been told maybe that's just some highlighting, gray purple highlighting on a on a black or brown owlbear. I have seen at least one other guy on YouTube paint it purple though, so I'm not crazy. But if you don't want a purple owlbear, you can also substitute in brown ink or sepia ink even. It would be, it would be a fairly dark one, um, even black. But you could follow these techniques uh, with different colored inks and still get similar results, I would say. All right, let's go paint that owlbear. Here's a look at the finished miniature we're painting today. He's bent over fairly far, so it's a little tricky to get a good shot of him, but hopefully you can make out uh, all the areas that are gonna be purple and not purple. The Nolzer's miniature primer is uh, a little bit of a gray white, so by dry brushing with a brighter white over a lot of the highlighted areas, so all the upper surfaces and a lot of that fur texture, uh, that's gonna shine through as highlights when we apply the ink glaze slash wash. Straight out of the bottle, we're going to use Seraphim Sepia around the face area and also the upper chest in my case, and you can consider that an optional uh, area for yourself. Now, this is d done to create some shading for what is going to be fairly bright, almost white feathering uh, on the face of the owlbear. Basically, he's going to be a big purple blob, and so we want his face to really stand out. The face is the focal point of the miniature, and then we want the purple to look nice, and then that's the combination of both is going to make it look really good. Now this is super easy. You're going to take your Vallejo Game Ink Violet, which is purple, and just literally out of the bottle all over the fur and feathers of this owlbear. You can choose to do different tones around, let's say, the feathers of his, I guess, wings slash arms if you wanted to you know, try different colors, you could absolutely do that. This just shows you how the ink is gonna behave uh, on this heavily textured surface. It's really gonna shade the texture, but also leave, uh, partly thanks to our, our white dry brush that we did, it's gonna leave a lot of the raised areas of the texture a lighter color to create some natural highlights, which is great. But again, if you wanted a green owlbear, doing this with green would look just as good, but it would be green. So that's maybe more of a shambling mound thing. And here you can see I take a smaller brush and be a little more precise just on the top of the head so you don't get it on his gigantic eyebrows. The inside of the mouth is painted with screamer pink. Uh, just thin it down slightly, but yeah, pretty straightforward. Now I'm gonna give the beak and eyes a glaze with yellow ink. Uh, I probably should have done the sort of like the chin, the lower mouth, because you know, there's the top and bottom of the beak, but I didn't, so uh, that's optional for you. I decided this sort of padding on his, on his uh, palm of his paw <laughs> is gonna be black. You could do any tone you like. You could use brown ink for more of a fleshy looking uh, padding hand paw and then I apply that black also over each claw and each um, toenail so to speak. I decided to shade under his arms and some of the sort of creased areas between shoulder blade and arm etc anywhere that it looks like there would be like a joint uh, with a little shading so I just mixed some purple and black ink you can see how many drops I applied um, a second ago and I just take my brush and apply that fairly uh, freely and, and um, carelessly onto anywhere that there's um, a crease created by his pose. The inside of the mouth is washed with straight Carolberg Crimson from GW. You can't tell from the bottle I hit with primer by accident, but this is Fugan Orange. I use this as a straight glaze uh, over the beak because I want it to be kind of an orange beak with yellow highlights showing through and that's what the Fugan Orange is going to allow. And again, do it on the bottom of his mouth if you want to do it that way. 
So rather than jump right to pure white, we're going to start with GW Pallid Flesh. I've got an uh, airbrush mix, so it's pre-thinned. You want to thin yours down with a bit of air, uh, thinner or even water is usually fine. And I'm just using a, a fairly, you know, small brush. This is a um, number zero, I believe, or zero zero from Redgrass Games. And I'm just applying highlights to the edges and ends of each of the feathers around his cheek and eye area. Just take your time, be careful. I got kind of messy with this and you'll see that I'm gonna to try to fix that up later. One way to do it on, on these smaller, sort of closer together feathers on his cheeks are to is to um, drag the side of the brush along the perpendicular to them. That's one way you can maybe more quickly and easily apply the white. Now to highlight, I just drop a blob of white into that pallid uh, flesh mix and you can see it here. Um, being pretty imprecise with the ratios, I just drop some white in to lighten it. I'm gonna apply those highlights over the same areas but just covering a bit less of the feather and more towards the ends of the feathers. Now I don't do it here, but you could definitely do a third highlight of just pure white and that would really make the face pop. Uh, I don't know why I didn't do it, but that's an option. I was finding the shading we did with the violet and black a little harsh, so I took some straight uh, violet ink and just kind of sort of blotched it around that shade line uh, just to help it blend into the purple around it. Um, somewhat optional step here, but it just I found that those lines were a little stark and I was trying to create a little bit more of a blur or softness between them and the original purple we did. Now I'd gotten a little messy with the highlighting of the feathers and gotten some of the white and pallid flesh into the like the creases between the feathers, which I didn't want. I wanted to bring out a little more of that definition. So I thinned down some seraphim sepia, which was the original wash we used, and I do that with lamian medium. You see here how I added some to a palette well, and I'm adding some um, seraphim sepia to that. Again, pretty imprecise, just trying to thin down that seraphim sepia. And then I just apply it over the area that I thought I had kind of gotten a little sloppy and then I kind of brush that off a little bit with my fingertip just to help uh, make sure that the brightness of the highlight is still showing. Similar to when we did the beholder's eyes, I mix uh, a black with a black ink uh, just to help the black run a little bit better, or a little smoother, a little more freely. Uh, it really helps with trying to do this precise work on the eyeball. And I'm filling in a fairly large, um, I guess it's an iris slash pupil here, and leaving some of the yellow showing around the outer rim of the eye, kind of like an owl would have if it, I don't know, if its pupil was greatly dilated. And painting them so that, not really cross-eyed, right, but looking upward at the enemy, like as if he's looking up from under his eyebrows. So there, that's why I've kind of got those... Um, pupils pushed up sort of diagonally on the inside uh, so be careful there don't make him you don't want him staring into space you want him to look like he's looking right where his beak is pointing next step is to give him an all-over matte varnish with either a spray can or airbrush now this is optional but I wanted the beak and the claws to have a slight sheen to them but not be really really glossy so I take um, some satin varnish from Vallejo and just brush that on and again it would have been great if I did the bottom beak in a beak color but I didn't so if you did you want to apply that this uh, varnish to that as well then I take gloss varnish with my brush and I just blob it onto each eye because I want those eyes to have that shine and to be uh, look alive and I, I blob it on because I don't mind if it's kind of thick and popping out because uh, it's an eyeball and here he is he's finished uh, I'm actually really happy with how that looks considering how incredibly easy it was to paint where most of this was a giant wash of purple ink. Um, it goes on really interestingly because it tints the area heavily but still creates those deep shadows as well. And like I said, I'm pretty confident if you used Vallejo brown ink in place of this purple, it would actually look awesome and would work just fine just like it did with the purple. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll subscribe and consider liking and sharing the video as well if you found it useful. Really enjoying these Nolzers WizKids miniatures or vice versa. And we'll see you next time.